Hi guys, how are you? I'm so much excited today because I'll solve a, a circuit problem. I love circuits, electric circuits, uh, but it's not only that. I'll be using Laplace transform. We already learned Laplace transform. I'm going to put the link uh, to the video where we learned it. I also prepared a summary sheet for you. So I'll also put the link under the descriptions so that you can review what we have learned before. So here I have an RLC circuit, a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor connected in, in series. And we have a DC power source. At time t is equal to zero, I'm closing the switch and the capacitor is initially uncharged. And I wanna analyze an underdamped system. So I require that this system is gonna be underdamped. So the first, con uh, first uh, question is, um, find the condition for being underdamped. So I want an underdamped system, but I want to find the condition for that, okay? And part B, I want to find the charge on the capacitor plates uh, as a function of time. This is a really, really interesting, a really nice problem. And before starting uh, the solution, so I want to discuss what underdamped mean, means. So we have a resistor, right? Whenever you have a resistor, like that, it's going to be a damped circuit, right? And this is a DC, uh, DC, uh, DC source, it's a DC circuit. So in the end, what's going to happen is I'm going to see an exponential decay term okay, due to the resistance. And I may or may not see an oscillation uh, due to the presence of LNC. If there was no resistor, okay, I would definitely see an oscillation, right? LNC, due to the LNC. But since there's an R, there's gonna be a damping. But in addition to the damping factor, okay, if I still see oscillation, this is gonna be under damped system. In other words, in my solution, I would like to see some sine cosine functions and some exponential decay terms, okay? So this is my introduction uh, to the underdamped uh, system and the solution to this problem. Okay, one other thing that we need to notice here is the presence of inductance, okay? Our inductor here. So as soon as I close the switch, okay? The inductor is not gonna like a sudden change in the current, right? So as soon as I close the switch, the, the value of the current is not going to be at its max, right? So inductor is not going to let that happen. So from this physical reasoning, I also require that at t is equal to zero, the current must be zero, right? So these two are my actually initial conditions. Okay. So what else happens in a DC circuit? I close the switch. The current is zero and then it starts to pick some values, right? It starts to run in the circuit. So let's close the switch. Time is zero. I close the switch, okay? At some time T later, there will be current in the circuit, okay? And there will be a potential drop across the resistor. There will be a potential drop across the inductor. I assume current is increasing at some point and there will be some potential drop across the capacitor. Okay, this is good. So if I wait long enough, what's gonna happen is this capacitor is gonna be fully charged, okay? When it is fully charged, what's gonna happen is the current in the circuit will no longer run, okay? I also expect that then when T goes to infinity in the limits, I mean, I also expect the current in the circuit to be zero, okay? So the whole potential drop is gonna be on the capacitor. It's gonna be fully charged. There will be no current and there will be no change in the current, okay? So the potential drop here and here are gonna be both zero. There will be only the potential drop here. So then what I can say is, say is Q and T goes to infinity must be equal to C times V naught. Please remember this. We are gonna use it later, okay? So when T goes to infinity, Q must be equal to C times V naught, okay? 
So now we can start the solution. I'm going to choose a loop, a closed loop direction like that. So what happens is my potential drop as I cross the inductor, uh, the resistor, and then the inductor we have minus L di over dt, and then the capacity which is Q over C. And then I come over here, my potential increases as I move from here to here, right? This is the DC source and the potential is increase is going to be V naught. I close the loop, then this should be equal to zero, right? Okay, so now I have I and Q. They are both functions of time. So how can I relate them? Well, I is running in this direction, right? And it's feeding the positive terminal of the capacitor. So I can simply say I is equal to dQ over dT. So this is the relation between I and Q. So wherever I see I, I can put dQ over dT. It's reasonable. So I'm going to put this term first. So L, the second derivative, plus R dQ dT plus Q over C must be equal to V naught after rearranging the terms. At this point, what I can do is since L is not zero, I can divide by L, right? Okay, 1 over LC, and then I forgot here, this is V naught over L, right? Well, at this point, I can actually introduce some new parameters. So R over L, I'm going to call it alpha. This is called damping factor. And 1 over LC, so there is 1 over LC here, is going to be omega naught square. So for those who already studied LC circuits, 1 over LC is nothing but the square of the resonance frequency. We are not going to be discussing that here today, uh, but for those, as I said, for those who already studied LC circuits, this is something special. Okay, so this is the equation, second order differential equation I want to solve uh, to get Q. Q is the charge on the capacitor place, it's, in, it's a function of time, right? And these are my initial conditions. So when T is equal to zero, charge on the capacitor is zero, the current in the circuit is zero. And there are these two parameters I defined earlier. So alpha is the damping factor, R over L, omega naught square is equal to one over LC, which is the resonance frequency of the uh, LC circuit. Okay. So now we are ready to introduce the Laplace transform. We are so excited. I love uh, to apply what I know in mathematics. So mathematical tools are good to know, but unless you apply them, they just stay some abstract notions in your mind, right? So as soon as you apply them, you enjoy them more, right? So anyway, so Laplace transform of Q. I'm gonna call it QS. So we go from the T space to S space, right? T is the time. S, let's call it frequency, frequency space from T to S. So dQ over dT, the first derivative. So the Laplace transform of the first derivative. I hope you all remember this. So S times QS minus Q, this Q here, and time goes to zero from the positive side. The Laplace transform of the second derivative, right? It's gonna be equal to S square QS minus S Q zero plus minus DQ over DT when T goes to zero from the positive side. And we also have V naught over L times one, right? So the Laplace transform of one is equal to one over S. Good. So I love this part now. I got my razor. So this is the point where you actually insert the initial conditions, right? You do not wait, wait till the end. So this is the point where you actually insert the initial conditions. And this is the power of Laplace transform method. So Q is zero and T is zero. So this is zero, this is zero. And the current in the circuit is zero and T is equal to zero. So this term is also zero. Here we go. So now we have much simpler expressions. Okay, so using these I can write down my equation. 
the Laplace transform of my equation. She's going to give me s square q of s plus alpha s or so alpha times s q s plus omega naught square q s is equal to v naught over l 1 over s. Good. So I can put everything in q s parentheses. So this is s square plus alpha s plus omega naught omega naught square is equal to v naught over l times 1 over s. Good. Well, this looks okay, but I can actually do something better to simplify it. So I have a quadratic term and I have a linear term. Well, actually I can complete the squares, right? How can I do that? Well, this looks like s plus alpha over 2 square with some term missing, right? <laughs> Let's find it. So this gives me s square plus alpha s plus, oh, alpha square over 4 is missing, right? Okay. So as you see, I have s square plus alpha s here. I have s square plus alpha s here. So then wherever I see s square plus alpha s, I can, I can write s plus alpha over 2 square minus alpha square over 4. And this is what I'm going to do here. So Q of S, parentheses, S plus alpha over 2 square. I'm going to put omega naught square first. Omega naught square minus alpha square over 4. Right? And this is equal to V naught over L, 1 over S. Good. Okay. So in the end, I get Q of S in this way. So it's V naught over L times 1 over S times 1 over s plus alpha over 2 square plus omega naught square minus alpha square over 4. So I have the product of two fractions here, right? So this is the Laplace transform of the function uh, that I'm trying to solve for. Uh, but this doesn't look like the Laplace transform of any function that I know of, right? But I know the Laplace transform of 1 over s and I know kind of the Laplace transform of 1 over s square plus something, right? So in the end, as the next step, what we want to do here is we want to decompose it, right? So you're going to use partial fraction decomposition. So in other words, what we are going to do is, v naught over L is our constant. I'm going to write this as A over S plus B S plus C over this term here, in the brackets. Okay, so if I, if I, if I can do it, right, I know the Laplace transform of 1, which is 1 over s, so I can easily inverse transform, right, the first term here. The second term is going to look like sine and cosine functions, right? The Laplace transform of cosine was s over s square plus omega square, right? And the sine was omega over s square plus omega square. Here, omega square was a positive constant, right? A positive constant. So if this is the case, in the end, I may get sine and cosine functions as the solution for Q, right? Okay, remember the underdamped condition, okay? We want to have an underdamped system. So in the end, I want to get sine and cosine functions. Okay, then this term here it looks like omega, right? Omega, omega square. So this term has to be a positive constant. Okay. If this is the case, then I will get sine and cosine functions for the, as the solution to this Q. Okay. Then this is the condition for underdamped system. Omega naught square minus alpha square over four must be larger than zero. Okay. Then putting all these here, omega naught square is equal to 1 over LC minus alpha square is equal to R square over L square. There is a 4 here. Okay, after rearranging this, 4L over C must be larger than R square. And this is the condition for the system being underdamped. This is good. So now I'm going to call this a different omega. Let's call it omega 1 square and this is larger than 0. I already know that. This is my requirement now. 
and the system is now under dent. So I just put omega 1 square here. I already defined that, right? So this term here is simply s plus alpha over 2 square plus omega 1 square. Okay. Here it's easy to find a, right? I hope you know, you all know the trick. So 1 over s, we close 1 over s and I put wherever I see s 0 to calculate a. So a is going to be equal to 1 over, I put 0 here, alpha over 2, alpha square over 2 square which is 4 plus omega 1 square. But what is this? Omega 1 square plus alpha square over 4 is 1 over omega naught square. So I already know, I already know what a is. Can okay, simply put it here, 1 over omega naught square. This is my a. Good. So the next step is, on the right hand side, we are going to equate the denominators. So when we do that, we will get the same denominators here, s times this term here in the bracket. Okay. And then v naught over l is already here. So the numerator here should be equal to 1. So I'm just going to be looking at the numerator. 1 must be equal to 1 over omega naught square times this term. 1 over omega naught square. I'm going to expand it. It's that s square plus alpha s plus I have alpha square over 4 plus omega 1 square. Plus then s times b s plus c. So this is b s square plus c s. Good. Here is another simplification. Alpha square over 4 plus omega 1 square is omega naught square. Already know that. So 1 must be equal to. I'm going to collect the s square terms. I have 1 over omega naught square plus b. So I use this term and this term. And then I'm going to collect the s terms. I have alpha over omega naught square plus c. So I get this term and this term. I still have this term here, omega naught square or omega naught square is simply equal to 1. Okay, so 1 cancels this 1. So I get 0 here. This is good. Okay, I have s square times something plus s times something. So I, I want this equation to hold for any value for s, right? And there is only one condition then. So one way to achieve this, so that the coefficient, the coefficient of s square must be equal to zero and the coefficient of s must be equal to zero. So when we do that, so b becomes minus one over omega naught square and c becomes minus alpha over omega naught square, which is nice. Okay, so now we can write q of s. And I, in a nicer way, so Q of S is now equal to E naught over L. Okay, so A has one over A is one over omega naught square, and B B and C also has they have they also have omega naught square downstairs. So omega naught square, I can take omega naught squares out. So this is the first term is one over S plus. So B has minus 1 here, so minus S, C has minus alpha over S plus alpha over 2 square plus omega 1 square. Good. Okay. So I'm going to put this minus out and I'll make this one plus. Okay. I can still do something else here. So omega naught square is equal to 1 over LC. So 1 over LC gives me here C times V naught, right? C times V naught. This is nice. So what was that? This was the charge on the capacitor when T goes to infinity. This is good. So now we are kind of ready 
to apply the inverse Laplace transform here. So it's easy to deal with the first term because Laplace transform of 1 is simply 1 over s. Inverse Laplace of 1 over s is just 1. However, the second term is a little bit problematic. I have s plus alpha over 2 here and I have s plus alpha here. So a quick reminder for the Laplace transforms. So if I find the Laplace transform of f in a function, it may be in this way, right? It may be found in this way, f of s. So if there is a shift in the frequency domain, so if you introduce a shift, s minus a, instead of s, if you put s minus a here, you need to introduce a, an exponential term here, a times e to the power a times t. Okay? And if you make this plus here, this becomes minus, okay? So when we write it in this way, this looks like a shift in the frequency space, but I have s plus alpha over two here, but I have s plus alpha here. So then what should we do? <laughs> it's easy, right? Instead of alpha, I'm gonna write alpha over two plus alpha over two. This is good. What else I'm gonna do? Well, I'm gonna keep the first term, I mean the second term as s plus alpha over two, and I'm gonna write a third term, which is gonna be alpha over two divided by that, right? And I shouldn't forget the minus sign here. So I'm gonna put another term here, minus alpha over two, one over s plus alpha over two square plus omega one square. S plus alpha over two. Okay, so now we are ready to do the inverse transform. So Q of t is going to be equal to C V naught. The inverse Laplace of one over S is one minus. Okay, this looks like cosine function, right? Cosine omega one t. Inverse Laplace of this is cosine omega one t with a frequency shift. So I, I need to put e to the minus alpha over two t. You see, we have damping and we also have oscillation under damped system. Great. And I have minus, okay. This looks like the Laplace transform of sine omega one t. However, I'm missing one omega one here, right? So I'm gonna put one omega one, omega one over omega one. That's what I'm gonna do here. Okay. So this gives me alpha over two omega one times e to the minus alpha over 2t, I still have the frequency shift, sine omega 1t. And this is my final answer. I'm going to put it in a little bit nicer form, and then we will see the limits and also the damping in a little bit nicer way. Q of t is equal to c times v naught minus c times v naught e to the minus alpha over 2t. First term times these two terms. Parentheses cosine omega 1t plus alpha over 2 omega 1 sine omega 1t. Okay, and this is my answer. How nice it is, right? So using Laplace transform, okay, we transform this differential equation into an algebraic one. We did a little bit algebra, we use uh, partial fraction decomposition uh, to write the Laplace transform of Q in a little bit nicer way. And then we apply the inverse transform to get these three functions, okay. And in the end, we see that there is oscillation, an oscillating term and also a decay term. This is an underdamped system. So if you wait long enough, when t goes to infinity, when t goes to infinity, q of t is simply equal to c times v naught, as we expected, right? This is also good. I'm not gonna do it, but for those who are interested, you can actually take the derivative of this and find the current in the circuit, okay? So when you do that, you should see that when t is equal to zero, 
i is equal to 0. So I want you to check this. And I also want you to check the, the other limit. When t goes to infinity, i must be also equal to 0. I also want you to check this limit. OK. I hope you enjoyed it. I was so much excited. I love using Laplace transform solving air, uh, electric circuits and also mechanical circuits. I mean, not circuits, mechanical systems, sorry. Like uh, the ones with masses, drag forces, springs, uh, external forces, so forth and so forth. So whenever you have a differential equation, you may uh, want to use Laplace transform, especially if you have nice initial conditions like that. Uh, this actually simplifies the, the solution a little bit, right? Inserting the initial conditions right at the beginning is really <laughs> nice. Uh, you don't need to worry about them later. And I hope you enjoyed it. I'll try to solve more problems uh, using Laplace transform. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon in other videos. Take care of yourselves, study well, and apply what you have learned in your math class to solve physics and engineering problems.